would say So say goodbye to everything you ever knew before And I'd understand if you went running out the door And I'll keep you safe And no harm will ever come to you, I swear And I'd kill if they even dare Mr. Boot, how Hi. are you doing? I'm doing quite nicely. How are you, Your Highness? I am excellent as always, it's and on so my way to getting super high. Nice outside too. It's, oh, oh my gosh! It's like mid sixties. Everybody has. I haven't them. felt this in forever. It feels like years. Every oh. time winter ends, it feels like it's oh. been years. Yeah. Everybody has their convertible tops down. Mm-hmm. Motorcycles you got, you guys, out riding it, around. It's, it hits it's nice. sixty. In Michigan. <laughs> and motorcycles are out and oh. tops are down. Everyone's not, been cooped up for not way too long. Shirt tops, car tops, like convertible tops. People haven't started the shirt tops. Thank you for clearing that. that up. That comes during hot, oh, hot that's boat a weekend. Thing, yeah. yeah, we'll I've talk to you about to that it, someday. But, yeah. That's a whole different thing. Look up hot boat weekend in mm. Michigan and mm. you'll see all kinds of oh, debauchery. Good, fun pictures. So we've been to a few of our favorite places. Some of our Instagram followers might have seen a couple of our reels. Yeah, this, Where'd this we weekend. Where'd we go this weekend? We went to two of our favorite spots. We went down to our oh. tracks and hung out. And we're very careful not to fall in the water because it's still... It's cold. <laughs> it's cold. The water's really cold. And then yesterday we drove up north to we our... We got to see a train at the tracks, there. too. We didn't even have to wait very long. Yeah, it came by. I'm sorry. Rumbled us. And then yesterday we took, what road was that? M37. Northbound. Yeah. We were passing the uh, household of the previous stories. Cecil. Mm, Wallace. Yeah. It was gorgeous up north. There was not many leaves, so you could see the river for miles it's and not, miles. Yeah, it's, it's so different than what we're used to. We didn't we, see we, any mannequins in the forest. Nope. No dead bodies yet. Nope, that, we went to the Manistee National Forest, you guys. And it, it, it's it's so beautiful because you can just see all of the hills and the mm-hmm. valleys and the gullies. And, mm-hmm. oh, and the, it's just so beautiful. We saw some scat. Yeah, we saw some, scat. Um, and lots of tracks. It wasn't rabbit scat because that's round. It was oblong. <laughs> I've yet to look up what kind of scat. Scat this is, but I feel like we should know. You're, you're going to become a scat master. To be, you started this shit. Oh, oh, oh I see what you did that there. That was totally accidental. Nice. Damn it. I hate it when it happens. <laughs> it's better when it's planned. I did you start this You started this by doing what on my face? By sending, well, you were confused about what raccoon scat looks like, so I brought up a picture. It and, looks like people poop. Oh, it does. It literally. Yeah. Well, so does goose I, poop. Goose poops a little. It's big. Like, it's like a dog was walking yeah, but around the, out there. Oh, I think this is more like people poop than goose poop is. Well, it there was might gross. Be... I thought you took a shit out in the backyard and were just so proud of <laughs> that's, it. That's what uh, that you were going to send friends it on to Facebook me. Said. It's oh like, my! No, gosh. that's Ron's. Well, thank you for that's taking boots. me to my favorite places. It was beautiful. You're welcome. Welcome to Michigan Murders and Music, mm. where we discuss murders. In our gorgeous, gorgeous states, getting prettier mm, every day. I love it. We top it off with a little homegrown music, leaving you with a happy ending and on a good note. Yes, thank you for let, letting us seep into your ears. Seep like a Jeep. You we know, saw so many Jeeps, too. We did. On oh, trailers, out driving around. I'm pretty around. sure there was a band of uber-rich, uber-uber-rich people and or famous people, which would also make them rich. Because one truck had like three Jeeps on it. It was a long trailer. And it was trailer. being hauled by a nice-ass rig. And they rig. were filthy. And they were all... Oh, they was, had fun. I had a Some little... Some serious fun. A little jealousy in my yep. nugs. You got a chubby is what you got. I did. Mm-hmm. You, you did, too. You can't lie. Yes, Who I did. You wouldn't want to go mudding in fucking jeep right I now no that would be great this week we are featuring a really cool band jesse ray and the carolina catfish jesse ray and the goddamn carolina catfish speaking of goddamn do you have an explicit warning this week before my language gets worse i 
Do her I highness do is have a cocktail going in my to hand. say, and that's a really bad thing. Mm-mm, no, it's mm, a good thing. Mm, it's a good thing. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. So be- before I say anything wrong, you again. Here we go. Uh, is there an empty no. beer can? <sighs> okay, get it. Your go. highness. Go. Your highness will say naughty words like the poop word, the f word, the other people naughty poop. words that contain Her. T- fuzzy, typically sex people. No, she's. Going off the rails. Uh, and that's not an unusual thing. It. But Pack we sucker. do need to warn you about the content. It's murder. It's murder. There's dead people. It's very unpleasant. Yeah, not very happy subject. Yeah. So but if, we fuck if you around, have, so it's fun. If you have little kids, you probably should not Put let them listen. Put your headphones in. What are those new things called? AirPods that the eye people use? Use those. Who understands eye, those eye people I, anyway? I don't, Becky. Oh, my God. What's your explicit warning? <laughs> Living in Michigan, sometimes you come across things that you don't want to see. If you see your Uncle Jerry having sexual intercourse with a dead deer on the oh. side of the road that he just recently ran over. Oh, gee, you, okay. You know, it's like oh, I, most I'm mornings listening. around here. Happens all the time. It really does. <gasps> you, you know, you know you Uncle Jerry's this. for real because he's, he's wearing a stormy crommer. Oh, shit, he ain't fucking around. Mm-hmm. That dude's from Michigan for and, sure. And waving at you with one hand while he's holding the deer by the tail. What? Yeah, it's what he calls a little bit of revenge on the side of oh. the road. Uh, he's, is he cutting the he's, deer? He's hollering, wreck my car, motherfuckers. Wrecked him. Damn near killed him. Mm-hmm. He lost his mind. I, I called Aunt Martha later. Was he doing something... Disgusting to that deer. Was he um, necro well, boinking? Oh uh, yeah. Oh that's my exactly god, what he, was doing. he was fucking. I think uh, it's necro bestiality. Oh, necro bestiality. Necro bestiality boinking. Necro bestie um, boinking. Martha says he's is. fine. He's sleeping a lot now. Did you ask Martha if she's giving it up because maybe he just needs some more? I don't. And if know. she's not no, giving not it up, let Martha. him. Go somewhere to get it if you, if he needs it. Not a deer. Good well, you know, Lord. You know, we don't have, you know, those kind of <sighs> massage parlors around We here. also don't have insurance for necro boinking. We don't have that kind of insurance. And if we did, I'm sure it would be super expensive because that sounds like something that's... Oh, yeah. It's it's unusual. It's like flood insurance. You can't get it. If you live in a flood you zone, forget it. You say that all the it. time. Is that really a true thing? Oh, yeah. You can't buy flood insurance if you're... So you can't buy fire insurance so if, you, it's like, if there's a high risk of fire in your area. So if I'm an arsonist, my oh. insurance is going to be higher? Yeah. <sighs> Do us a favor and support our podcast with a friend. You guys apparently have been sharing with friends because first, our numbers are going up. Like mm-hmm. like that little I guy, that little yodeling guy and the that, price that, is right. Oh my God. Where he goes yes. up the hill and he's I like, feel- yodeling. Yep. Ooh, mm-hmm. He's climbing his little mountain. That's what our number thing looks like, you guys. It's going up. Yes. And Thank it's getting bigger. Every one of you. We're getting more downloads. And yep. I have new people. Let's we hear have about that. New people. Okay. This is who we have today. We have a very special girl. She lives in Florida. And I think if you hear her name, you'll be glad to know she's following us on Instagram. Her mm-hmm. name is Darian. <gasps> she you is, have to be kidding me. I'm, I didn't know. Thank you for keeping that a surprise. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I yeah. love her. Darian's following us. She's <laughs> just absolutely gorgeous. Mm-hmm. We have, thank you, Darian, by she the way. She is my niece, and I love her to pieces. And we have Ty Winderbaum. Mm, thank you, Ty. We have the Hoff. The, oh, yes, yeah, the Hoff. The Hoff got stickers sent to him this mm-hmm. week because... We heard he was not too technically savvy, so his buddy wrote us a message for him to send him hey, some stickers. Hey, we all need helpers so with difficult things. Actually, probably already gotten them stickers. I think I hope so. Oh my gosh! Guess what? Wow. We have our very first fur baby follower. I don't. Oh, it's the a, people that dress up. It's like, a no wrong kind of fur baby. Oh. I'm talking about an animal, a pet. Oh. 
Her name is Bandit Louise, and oh. she's a Michigan pity, and she's Brindle, and she's so cute. And apparently, oh, she. Oh, I love Brindle. Apparently, she likes to listen to us. Well, good. Thank you. Crazy ass dog. Mm hmm. We also have Nick ML. He's from Nick. the Tennis Podcast. Great fucking podcast. Also, oh my gosh, you guys. Supernatural. Wow. On the rack. It's a podcast. They're following us, and I started uh, the first two or three seasons of Supernatural are my favorite. But they're it's a podcast about Supernatural, and it's super great. They started following us. I'm a super fan already. Thank you, well, guys. Murder is a special kind of thing, and even though we don't do it ourselves, it's we just don't. really interesting. It is super interesting. I, I, there's just... Like, the story we're about to follow, we Ugh. were pre-talking just a little bit, and it's like, what the fuck? There is something majorly wrong with these guys. this happen. I'm going to call drugs. So, just your highness. Up their brain. Where are we going today? We are going to the east side of the Detroit area. Nothing very specific. We will... Not the west side. Take note how I didn't say it's, it's uh, the best side, because it's, it's the, the east side, side of Detroit. Things get a little bit weird. We are featuring today Frederick Young, prisoner number 679427. He is currently residing at Carson City Correctional Facility. Then we have Philando Demone Hunter. (laughs) It's Demone ass. Demone? I said it's Demone. Okay. Prisoner number 738855, who resides at Barraga. Max facility. Listen to the rap sheets that these two have. You do Frederick, I'll do Philando. Frederick. Philando his, sounds. On his record here is two weapons slash firearms, five years. Unlawful imprisonment, 22 years. Armed robbery, 75 years. Torture, Jeez, 75 years. Loud. Two premeditated homicides, first degree life. Home invasion, first degree, 20 years. <laughs> so Fred has eight daubs on his bingo card. You know those daubers on your bingo card? I do. We get to yeah. use them at work. They're fun. They really make me want to play bingo. Here we go with Felatio. F- I mean, Philando. He has one. <laughs> I saw you shake your head. I'll, that's my Mary. Uh-huh. Uh, that's why I told you guys the explicit content. Yep. Okay. Philando, unlawful imprisonment. 15 years, armed robbery, 75 years, torture, 75 years, two, that's a dose, first degree premeditated homicide, life in prison, three, trace, weapons, firearms, two years in the slammer, two, home invasion, first degree, assault with intent to cause great bodily harm, that was 15 years, First degree murder, life, bitch, and a homicide, felony murder. I don't know what the difference is between those last two, but there's obviously a difference. So guess what? I have 13 dobs with Felicio oh, Philando. Philando win wins the bingo yep. game. Oh, he's way more of a oh, who, disgusting who human being than whatever the douche <laughs> Anyway. So for me, Ron, this story started... As I was looking into the murder of two young men, quite quickly I realized there was a lot more to the story. Mm -hmm. But let's start with the two young men, okay? Jacob, a college student at Schoolcraft College, and Jordan, a senior in high school. Do you know where Schoolcraft College is by chance? It's in Schoolcraft. (laughs) (laughs) Deadpan. Just (laughs) fucking deadpan. What do you want to (laughs) know? That was good. I had nothing else. You answered the question. Okay. Sunday in July of 2012, the boys first visited Jacob's uncle on the east side of Detroit, and they picked up some Mary Jane from him. Mary Jane? Yeah. You mean like the stuff that people smoke? Like, I love you, Mary Jane. Some stories state that the uncle gave Jacob some pain meds for an old injury. Jacob did walk with a cane, although I'm not sure how he was injured or what, what I'm his injuries are. I'm guessing a football are. injury, but who Could knows? Be. Could be. 
But, you know, once people start taking those pain meds. It's hard to get off them. I weaned off them, and it wasn't fun. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad I did because I would be on the heroin by now probably. probably. I'd be one of those Michigan statistics. Probably. They hopped into their white Chevy Cavalier and headed to find different kinds of drugs. I I don't know if they were looking for, I don't know. They already had he's weed just, and These guys just meds. wanted to get they high. They just wanted to get more drugs. Mm-hmm. I understand sometimes. Not sure what they were trying to buy, but uh, they drove to Algonac Road. With 200 doll hairs in their pocket. As the story goes, in most of our episodes, they were never seen alive again. Mm-hmm. Fuck. They went to a house where Frederick's cousin and his girlfriend, Brandon and Stephanie. The two of those people testified that the boys had come to the home to buy narcotics. Why did they have narcotics? The, apparently they knew that they had narcotics. I don't, I don't know how they knew these people, but cousin somebody okay. gave somebody. A, some, I don't understand how the two boys knew these people, but it really doesn't matter. They connected for a drug deal. They went to this house to pick up the drugs. The conversation started rather politely, but the next thing they know, the boys are getting robbed by Frederick and Felicio. I mean, Philando. She heard the kids (laughs) begging to take everything they have, all their money, whatever, anything. She also heard Philando say, I'm tired of you white boys coming into my neighborhood and taking my stuff. He kind of sounded like Clint Eastwood and... Oh, sitting on the porch there. Oh, I, I, I really miss doing the Clint Eastwood thing on our porch. <laughs> he does it every day after work. It's great. The boys begged them to let them go. Like, here, take our money. Take the weed we already have. Take whatever you want. Please just let us go. But something obviously triggered Philando, and they were not about to let them go. Mm-hmm. They ordered the boys onto the floor. One of the boys was hit on the head with a firearm. I think a rifle, I believe it was some it wasn't like a he didn't get pistol whipped. It was something longer. Um, the last thing that she had seen was the boys in everything but their pants being marched through the kitchen where she was while thing like she shit was going down yeah, and, and she went, sees these boys without their pants on being marched through the kitchen. Yeah. That's a messed up situation. And then she sees them getting forced into the trunk of of the car. The parents of the young men reported them missing, and searches began to look for the, the boys' bodies. Five days later, a 911 call was made by none other than a Michigan scrapper. And we see these guys all over the place, and it's a good thing because it keeps our state clean. It really does, and it helps them make a little bit of money if mm-hmm. they're not able to, to do it. This Michigan scrapper wasn't like the one in, what episode was episode that? Episode 23, yeah. Yeah, Different that, scrapper. those guys went a little awry. Mm. This is a good guy. Oh, this is so weird. We were just talking about this in the forest the other day. When they initially saw the bodies, it's in a common like dump area down there. It's in this overgrown area, and it's also approximately like three to five miles from the uncle's home. And it was in this overgrown area where people are known to dump stuff, right? And they originally thought it was like a love seat. Yeah, because seriously, who who expects to find bloated, decomposing your bodies brain does not, on the side of the road? Your brain doesn't want to go there. You're out there looking for scrap metal, whatever. I think your brain just doesn't want to. Oh, I think that's no. why people always say, I thought it was a mannequin, because your brain's like, uh-uh. It can't be a no, dead not, human. No way. Mm-mm. And um, there's a couple different things about how their bodies were found, but this one makes more sense. They were found like they had been shot on their knees and their bodies kind of crumpled over. Mm. So that means they wouldn't be laying flat, and they were right next to each other. So that kind of makes sense that it would... It does. You know, it, look it like could. a tan couch or something. Right. Weirdly, the bodies were quite decomposed, and their shoes were gone, and so was some of their clothing. And, and we said they didn't have pants on before. Right, so we knew their pants were gone, but their shoes were missing, and all I can think is, and this is no disrespect to the victims, but I'm just imagining a poor homeless person that doesn't want to get involved but really needed a damn pair of shoes. I understand that. And that's desperation. It totally makes sense. that could have happened. We don't know why the shoes were gone. That's just my 
detective work. <laughs> when the police arrived <laughs> near the scene, they found two men stripping the white Chevy Cavalier. Was it a box Chevy? No, that's what Yellow Wolf drives. Oh. He has a few box Chevys. They were, of course, arrested and questioned, but it turns out they were not involved. No, nope, they They're, were just checking what they could out of the car. Yep. I can't believe that'd be much. It's a Scrappers. Chevy Cavalier. Hey, whatever. Get what you can get. The bodies looked like, like they had been shot execution style. Yes, like I said a few yes, seconds ago. Yes, you did. But that's okay. To say it again. It, it, it's really sad. I'm going to put something in right now that I didn't put in our outline. It is um, a lot of the articles said they it looked like they had been shot execution style. And yes, that is like to the back of the head, right? But they also had been severely beaten. Mm. And... I think in the five days that they had been missing, probably due to the weather, it was the summertime, and the fact that they had been beaten so badly, their bodies were in a rather advanced stage of decomposition. Gross. And uh, so in the scene, um, one shell casing and one intact shell, both fired from a, what is that called, Ryan? A .243 caliber rifle. What the Fuck is yeah, that? I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with that. It's, it's described oh, as a I rare think it's a z- round, and they were found at the scene. Oh, you know what? They have an AK-47 later. Is that one of those? I don't know. I don't know. Somebody can email us and tell me. In Discovery, the cops find out that this is just the start of a two-week crime spree involving seven Detroit area. I lied. Six Detroit area men, one Detroit area woman. Ooh. This is where I was like, dang, I'm looking into these two young men. And sad, then all this which other is a stuff horrible, turns up. sad, brutal murder. But actually, that just triggered two weeks of fucking violence. Mm-hmm. Just disgusting, non called for violence. During one of these robberies, the men broke into the home of someone they knew. This woman was a saint. She had actually brought a few of these men into her home at different times. She had like, Helped feed them. She gave them odd jobs around the house so that they had money. Yeah, to keep them off the street. Let them shower. Just helping them. Helping them. Trying to keep them off the street. Come to find out they're sociopaths, psychopaths, whatever. Yeah. You you know what they did? They came back and they robbed her and their children in that home. Mm -hmm. They took PlayStations, laptops, electronics, all the electronics in the house, um, the worst part is this woman lived next door to her father, the grandfather to these kids, right, mm-hmm. whose who's stuff is getting stolen. Yeah, and the kids ran over to their grandfather's house in fear of their lives, of course. Yeah, why they were well. being robbed. One of the girls was on Grandpa John's porch next door. And she happened to have her iPad with her. She was taking pictures of whatever she could possibly take of this robbery going on, right? And Grandpa's out yeah. there calling. Grandpa John's out there calling 911. Mm-hmm. Grandpa was a Vietnam veteran, by the way. Thank you, Grandpa John. Yeah, and then suddenly Rico Simmons yeah, he fired sees- his revolver, hitting Grandpa John in the back. Yeah, this is how that went down, though. Mm-hmm. He sees the girl taking pictures. He aims straight at the girl. Grandpa John sees that he's aiming at the girl, Being the amazing Vietnam veteran vet that he was. That's amazing. Dives in front of the goddamn bullet, takes the bullet for his granddaughter. I can't even right now. That's movie style, Grandpa John. That's amazing. And then... Philando Hunter fires his AK-47 at least seven times because you can't shoot just one round. Grandpa John. Mm-hmm. With an AK-47, for mm-hmm. Christ's sakes. So Grandpa John struggles to make it inside his home with his grandkids there, and he died on the floor in view of his three granddaughters. This is nuts, B. <sighs> I got to take a breath. That is so sad. So yeah. sa- first, this family is getting robbed. Already traumatic. Second, Grandpa John gets killed, and they s- see it? I got to take a drink. Mm-hmm. Here, the ice clink it in the glass, mama. So, okay. So we Orlando, already... The next day. <sighs> for real? Yeah, for real. So already the two boys have been killed, right? Now they've robbed this house and killed Grandpa John. 
So the next fucking day, yep. what does Philando do? He's involved in another murder. What Philando. The, is he on, what kind of drugs make PCP? I'm old school. I don't know. Fucking meth or something? I don't know. He had all of his teeth, so oh. I don't know what he was on. But yeah, very next day. Philando. Oh. Janelle McDonald. Prisoner number 867792. You know that was hard for me to I not know. say the other word. Mm -hmm. She is residing at Huron Valley Women's Complex. And Jerry Pringle, <laughs> he's number 860759. 860759. <laughs> yep. 860759. That was so difficult for you. He's yep. residing at Chippewa Chippa. Correctional Facility. Chippa. Chippa. You know those. Black boots I have. The yeah. brand is Chippewa. No way. Yeah, maybe they make. I love them. Maybe they make Pringle and McDonald's make them at the facility at the, at the prison. We've got Pringles yeah, and McDonald's all involved in this case already. These three break into a home, took Ugh. captive a young man from the home. They made him receive oral sex. Now that from sounds Chanel as extra fucked up as it is. I've got questions about. Well. Wait, time out. Don't say the next part. Okay. How, okay. How do you force someone? How do you force someone to get a boner? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, the kid was the one who was giving. Yeah, Chanel was. He, was yeah, Chanel was open. giving him, the kid, oral sex. You know what I'm saying? The kid that they were holding captive. How on earth? I don't know. Yeah, I don't get this, it either. It's gross, it, but this is what happened. Well, yeah. she, while well, Chanel is giving this kid head, basically, she's performing a sexual act on this kid. Yeah, then one of the men shot the kid in the head. Right, as, I mean, if you're going to go, getting head's a good way to go. I, I guess. However, no, not okay, guys, not okay. Oh, my God, that's 18 ways of fucked up. 862 kind of ways of fucked up. Chanel ends up serving 10 years for this this act, right, that they just did in this house. Mm -hmm. Pringle, Jerry Pringle, he's serving 42 years in the Chippewa Correctional Facility. Now, we've covered, remember um, I said it was a two-week Crime spree? Mm hmm Well, seven suspects were in that crime spree, correct? Yes, seven. So we just covered four of them. All of the other suspects, which is, what's the five, six, seven, three more suspects were prosecuted, and they are serving sentences ranging from 12 years in prison to mandatory life. While the crime spree is over, the story isn't quite over yet. Yeah, I have to talk about the well, demeanor you, of these two men in the courtroom. They were rude fucking pigs, assholes. Not pigs, just rude, disrespectful assholes. Neither of the men looked like they had any sort of remorse at all. No. The families bravely stood and gave their statements on behalf of their lost loved ones. You want to know what Frederick Young was doing? Oh, he's just kind of swiveling around in his chair. With his just back kind of, to the family. Yeah, he put on some chapstick. You know, it was just... Dis with his disrespectful as hell. back to the family. Yeah, what kind of response did he have to the families? Here's the response, and then I'm going to tell you what else pisses me off. This is what he said after all of the families spoke, right, and, mm -hmm. and had their time of peace. This was his response. What fucking douche canoe. I'd like to say sorry to the families of Ayanna Jones, Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, and I want to apologize to them for not being able to get justice for their loved ones who was murdered in cold blood. And in respect for the peaceful protest, I want to say hands up, don't shoot. Black Lives Matter. What a douche. Black Lives 100% matter. They do. Uh, you just went on a two-week killing spree. You don't get that right to... <sighs> I don't have the right to bitch about it, but that was just, that was just so wrong. Just yeah. fucking wrong. So, I wasn't going to play that because I felt like it gives his voice more power. All right. But I also felt like that fucker's in jail. You've lost your power. You guys needed to hear it. It's it's a fucking weird thing to say in response to a family when uh, you've just gone on a two week. He just read something spree. off. Yeah, I'm glad he had chapstick on. I don't get it. Douchebag. It really pisses me off. 
Yep. Uh, this is the part where I seriously ask God, you know, those archaic things that hold your eyeballs open, your eyelids? Can well, in the old Bugs right Bunny now? cartoons, they'd use toothpicks to hold them open. Okay, but I feel like at yeah. some point in some weird science place, they had these metal things that held your eyelids open. Yeah. I think they should have those on. I think they should be strapped to a chair that has a nice little taser electric current going to it. And he needs to face the family. Whoever the guilty person is needs to be in this chair with their eyes open with this weird metal looking thing. They can't move. And if they move one inch, you zap them. You're scaring me. I don't care. They, what, what gives him the right to put his fucking uh, back to the families of these two children that he killed? Children, young, young adults. Yeah. That's not okay. Face your fucking people, you pussy. You don't. You can't even look him in the eyes. He doesn't eyes. care. He's you, a cold-blooded killer. You, he doesn't care at all. Mm-mm. Taser his ass every time he moves. Force his eyeballs open. Make him look at him. The families of Jordan <clears throat> and Jacob are way better than, than I ER. am. They, they forgave these douchebags. To their face, I they said, said it. It says men, but they're douchebags. They're not men. Mm-mm. They're, they're, they're not even dirt. Dirt. Dirt's better than they are. Mm-hmm. They forgave them. Jesus. Amazing people, really. Super amazing. Uh, I think... Uh, do they takes, really, though? You have to, to move on from something like yeah. that, I think. Yeah, so it right. takes very big people to move on from the, that kind of loss and the loss of their boys. You think we're going to find the other three people that were involved in this I, spree after, of killings? After the whole oral sex thing, and he got killed while getting oral sex, I just didn't want to look into the next I understand three that. people. It's really I disturbing. Like, I'm actually, I, I know we talked about. I don't close about, my eyes while I'm getting head anymore. Uh, don't you even. I'll, I'll just keep I'm, looking around. <laughs> We obviously talk about really disturbing shit every week. We're laughing out of nervous energy. I, this one is really fucking disturbing. It really is. Really disturbing. I'm super curious about the others, though. I would like to follow up on the story. Don't count on me doing that, though, because sometimes my words are it may far, or may not happen. far we don't know. mightier than my energy and my time. I will write it down. I will try to follow up on the other people and exactly how they were involved. Either way, oh my God. Your Highness. Boot. Are we ready for a happy ending? <sighs> Please. And more to drink. And I mean a happy ending, not a shot in the head. Not a shot in the head kind of happy ending? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's going to be my new thing now. Hey, Boot. Honey. Uh-uh. 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 Honey, come here. Uh-uh. Oh, you guys, I forgot to tell you. <gasps> Boo is drinking yeah. Pabst Blue Ribbon this week. I've got Pabst Blue Ribbon on my mind. He is more and more it lately. Up. I find <laughs> <laughs> I've got a taste for living. I'm drinking Pabst Blue Ribbon. Oh my! God. I've got Pabst Blue Ribbon on my mind. <laughs> That's rare that you guys get to hear Boot sing. It's always me. <laughs> Fucking A, yeah. yes. I we switched up my brand because thing. I needed to be more classy. Uh, oh, right? yeah. Well, it it 100% Shut up. is more classy than the Natties. I'm definitely going to give you that. Thank you. And my dad drank PBRs for a Aww. while. Oh, he, do you have daddy issues? Fuck off. I'll okay. daddy issue you right upside the I head. I smoke with the same brand PBR. of cigarettes that he smokes. Oh, my God, smoked. you do. Oh, that's so gross. Yeah, you're kind of weird. Why, why I'm going to get a bringing... shot to the head. Oh, my God. Honey. <laughs> Honey, would you like some fellatio <laughs> from Falado? You What's hear the pistol name? cock. Honey, would you like some fellatio? <laughs> Come here, honey. Come here. <laughs> Anyways. Yep. Happy ending. Jesse Our Ray and the Carolina Catfish. Ending. They are a two-piece band that sound like 20 people because they have the energy of 50 people. Sometimes they add a bass player, which is cool, Once in a while but you, it's not necessary for their what Not they at do. all. Most of the time, you see them, just the two of them. Mm-hmm. It's a band that even your parents would enjoy, you guys. I'm mm-hmm. not lying. You could take your mom to the show. Oh, well, first, any woman. 
yeah, any gonna woman. see Jesse Ray. And I'd be like, oh, and they're hey. gonna be like, hey, married off the market. Don't go there, but you can't help it. They're you both, can still look at them. Ah, they're both. I admire them for the the handsomeness. They are adorably that they are. cute. So your parents would love them because they've got that old school Jerry Lee Lewis Elvis vibe to them. Rockabilly, little rockabilly going on. Their stage presence will literally knock your boots off. Mm-hmm. And uh, ours you off know it knocks our, these boots off all the time. Mm-hmm. And guess what? We get to go see them next month. I certainly hope because we can get live in. music is coming back. If in we if April. we go up early, do you think we can like pay someone to? Let us in, sneak it. Sneak I us thought in you were going to ask to pay for some fellatio. I no, just want to get not, in. I'm never going to. I'm just really scared. Get fellatio ever again. This is the first time that we've been able to go see live music in over a year. It's been a long I'm time. I'm scared it's going to sell out. The guys in the bands are like, "Oh God, stop being so over dramatic. It's oh, not going to no, sell out." No, they have no idea. Uh, it's they have the, no idea how you popular guys, these guys are. It's the Jet Beats. Uh-huh. You've heard them. We've played them for you. Mm-hmm. And it's Jesse Ray and the Carolina Catfish. Big deals. Oh, my God. Two both big deals. major, mm-hmm. huge touring bands. And you can only get, like, what, 50 people? I don't there? even know what our capacity limit is right now because I've been avoiding mm. the news. Mm. Except for murder articles. We'll wear masks like responsible human beings. We decided, we listened to all their songs, and, of course, I downloaded two of the albums from bandcamp.com. Go on Bandcamp, buy their music. I paid five bucks for a full album of this amazingness. We listened to loads of songs. You better hit that play button. Hard to narrow it down. What one did we pick? Beer City. Beer City. Beer City because it's practically been closed down for a year. Jesse Ray and the Carolina Catfish coming to a town near you soon. And they're coming to your ears. Right this minute. Into mine. If you are sitting on a chair, be prepared to slide off. Peace out. Cheers, boo. Cheers.
thank you for choosing Michigan Murders and Music. Please rate the show wherever you listen. Michigan Murders and Music is produced by The Boots. Episodes are researched and written by Your Highness. Edited by Your Highness. Views and opinions are the sole stupidity of us and us alone. Don't blame others, please. Listening to this podcast could quite possibly cause major problems to your earballs and definitely will mess up your kids. Permission has been given to us by the bands and we've purchased our music on Bandcamp.com. Support your local music scene and all local music scenes.